Welcome to my channel. Those of you who've been around for a little while know that I've been following the uh, Fannie Willis story out of Georgia. <coughs> uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> uh, if you're not familiar with the case, I have a playlist and for her specifically, and you can go watch some of the other videos and see what's going on. Or just Google Fannie Willis, F-A-N-I-W-I-L-L-I-S. Uh, I watched a uh, Alan Dershowitz video the other day where he called her Phony Willis, which I thought was kind of funny. But anyway, before we get into this, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being a part of this exciting time in my life. I just, I, I so much appreciate all the interaction and the wonderful comments and the praise that you're giving me. I promise I won't let it go to my head, but it, it's, it's just amazing to me. So, uh, I'll give you a brief uh, summary of what's been going on. Bonnie Willis is the district attorney of Fulton County, Georgia, and she's the one that filed the case uh, the election interference case against Trump and 18 other co-defendants and um, <clears throat> now it's uh, blowing up in her face turns out that she has uh, had a um, romantic relationship with Nathan Wade the gentleman that she hired to be her special prosecutor for the case and that um, <clears throat> they went on vacations together, very expensive vacations all over the world. And uh, they testified on the stand that their relationship did not begin before he was hired as special prosecutor. It now turns out that they both lied on the stand. And this is likely going to end up in both of them losing their law licenses. So... I just thought I'd bring this to your attention. This article says Trump submits cell phone records allegedly showing Nathan Wade and Fonnie Wells' interactions before his hiring. Yeah. Um, they used a program, if I can find the thing in here. Uh, what was the name of that? The Cell Hawk was the name of it. Um, they had an investigator named Charles Middlestott um, used a program called Cellhawk, which does uh, analysis on cell phone records. And uh, um, <clears throat> gosh, if I can find it in here, I should have highlighted it. But it's it's unbelievable. I mean, they have thousands and thousands of cell phone text messages between the two of them dating to well before uh, he was hired and uh, um, phone calls, not just text messages, but phone calls as well. Uh, 2,000 phone calls and 12,000 text messages during an 11 month period before he was hired. That's a lot of activity. Um, they using geolocation uh, <clears throat> information, they've determined that uh, 35 instances, a minimum of 35 instances in which Wade's phone was connected for an extended period of time to the towers near her house in Hapeville, Georgia. The data reveals that he was stationary and not in transit. And... There's one in here, if I can find it, it's, it's uh, <laughs> pretty damning. Ah, uh, here we go. Specifically, the investigator claims in his affidavit that records show Wade's phone arrived in the area of Willis's apartment at 10.45 p.m. on September 2021. He was hired in November, so this is before, which proves perjury and remained there until approximately 3.30 in the morning. So from 10.45 at night to 3.30 in the morning, he was with Fani. The investigator claimed the records show Wade's phone arrived back 
to the area of his apartment just after 4.05 a.m., and that he then sent a text at 4.20 to Ms. Willis. So, uh, I don't know what the judge will do with this information, but uh, it does not look good for them. They've been fighting tooth and nail to try and keep some of this stuff out. They're try fighting tooth and nail to keep uh, Terrence Bradley's uh, knowledge of their affair from being entered into the record. And I think they it appears that they've been successful with that, although um, the judge may, may take that evidence, what they call in camera, which means uh, in the judge's office without... Uh, with only a court reporter there and nobody else. I don't know if the attorneys representing the parties can be there or not. I don't think so. But somebody who has more legal knowledge than me can answer that. But uh, <laughs> this is... Uh, well, I'll put it like this. If the judge accepts this evidence into the record, I don't see any way that he can that he can determine that they did not commit perjury and having determined that also determined that they are to be thrown off the case and if the bar association looks into it uh, i think that they will lose their bar licenses because the the worst thing an attorney can do is lie on on the under oath on the stand in a legal proceeding that's just that's bad 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 so uh, if everything goes the way that it should go this will be the end of the georgia trump case unless the attorney general of the state of georgia decides to hand the case off to someone else to try but even that will will cause tremendous delay and probably uh, end up not being nothing happening or very little happening before the election. So in, in, F, in essence, the case is now moot. So I just thought I'd keep you filled in on this. It's an interesting case, uh, of uh, hubris, uh, that is coming back to bite some folks. Now for you, my viewers, I pray that you will live an abundant life and that you'll be healthy and that you'll live a long time. And I pray that God will keep you safe from harm. And I pray that he'll do the same for every person that you love. I also pray that you'll be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you'll let your request be made known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.